Thank you, Jimmy. So I'm not going to tell you the exact variety you should plant, but I'm going to talk about how you can interpret the variety test publications that we have. For example, in your proceedings, we've got our long-term summary publication, and I'll spend a little bit more time with that, um, but that summarizes the variety test that we've done in Kentucky over the last 15, 16 years. Um, G. Dolson is our variety test coordinator. Um, he harvests over 5,000 plots per year. Um, so we've got one of the most extensive variety testing programs in the country. Um, and like I say, I'll highlight a few things on that. Um, here's just an aerial shot. You know, forage specialists, we like to have toys too. So this is a drone actually Ag Communication owns, but we thought it would be nice to look at an overview. Um, and you can see even from this overview that there's some differences between the different plots of forages that we have. Um, you go a little bit closer, you can actually see the individual plots that are each 5 feet by 20 feet wide. And these are harvested uh, 3 to 5 times per year, depending on the type of species and the maturity of that species. So the first point, and I pulled out this old slide of Jimmy back, I don't know, Jimmy, 20 years ago, 25 years ago? Yeah, I so today and 25 years ago and 25 years from now, there's a big difference in varieties. This is just an example of a common red clover seed um, that probably did okay the first year and maybe even the beginning of the second year, but in the third year of production, it's virtually thinned and the certified seed, and this could be any of a number of varieties, is still very strong. Okay, another example is here in this um, fescue stand. You, you, we don't know just by the name of a variety or even by the company selling it if it's for sure adapted to Kentucky. And so that's part of our variety test program. So for you to buy seed and not have any background, any records of it, um, if we don't have an our variety test, at least ask the company, um, you know, show me some performance records from Kentucky or close by. You could end up with a stand like this, and obviously you don't want that. I'm going to... A lot of our other speakers will talk more about managing your stand as far as things like fertility management, but I want to make the point that it's important to lime, particularly the legumes, especially alfalfa red clover. Um, here's pH in the low fives. This is an alfalfa stand. Here's a pH of 6.5. Um, all the other nutrients are at, at the recommended levels. That's the only difference in those two. Um, Here's a stand that a farmer was wanting to know what variety to plant. He actually was having a hard time getting anything established. This was a hay field that he'd cut hay off for 10 years. <clears throat> You'll notice that his phosphorus was low. His potash was very low. No wonder he couldn't get a stand. Um, you've got to fertilize based on what the soil recommendations call for. No, it's not going to matter what variety he plants until he gets the fertility at a proper stage. Okay, now let me move into the main part of my talk. So first of all, getting to the variety test information, easiest way is to go to our forage website. You just Google KY forages. Um, you've got a number of um, things listed here, but if you go scroll down a little further, you'll get to the forage variety testing. Um, we've also got here upcoming meetings, like the American Forage and Grassland Council in Louisville just coming up um, starting Sunday. Um, We've got flyers for these three meetings out, the Pasture Plebe Equine Program, the Small Ruminant Conference, um, the Alfalfa Conference. Um, there's also um, a tall fescue session that the flyer is out there looking at. It's March 8th, um, Novel Tall Fescue Renovation Workshop. Excellent program all, all day about um, better ways to establish and manage tall fescue. Now, in about two weeks, this will be the Forge website. We're updating it. We hope that it'll be seamless and that you won't get lost. But whether you get here or here, uh, pretty soon this will be our permanent website. And, and here you would just go down here to Forge Variety Trials, and you would have all of them listed um, that we have in Kentucky, um, and even we have some adjoining states linked. So you're going to come up with a list like this, everything from the individual alfalfa report um, down here a little bit further to the summary report is just below the screen here. And you can go back and you see here we go back all the way to 2001 with variety testing. 
So if you click on the long-term summary, the same thing that you have in your proceedings, um, you've got the table of contents. Um, I'm going to make a couple of comments with red clover. So let's say you're trying to decide what red clover variety that you want to buy and plant. Okay, here's the whole chart. Um, a lot of varieties, a lot of testing information, as I said, going all the way back to 2001. The whole reason that we put together the summary report was that the other individual, like just the red clover yield trials, um, you've got to, you'd have to go back through every year to find the data going way back. And so we've summarized all of that. And let me just give you a little better, easier to read example of that. So if we look at just the top part of that page, um, you look at different varieties, and then you see these numbers that you say, what do those mean? Those don't look like tons per acre. They're percentages. The easiest way to explain it is probably over here, the average over all the trials. And I've split it in the middle, so there's a lot of other data right here in the middle. But average is 100%. So the long and the short is you'd like to choose a variety that's better than 100%, better than average. And you look here, for example, Cinnamon Plus from Southern States. It's been in 19 different trials. That's what the 19 means. It's 108% of average. Um, you go down to Kinlan. It's been around for a number of years. As long as you make sure you get the certified seed, it's 110%. We've tested it 29 times. But if you say, well, I might just buy some cheap seed. I might buy seed that just says on the bag, medium red clover. Does it have a variety listed? But I don't care. It's red clover. I'm saving 50 cents a pound. That's going to be a common variety, meaning that we don't know what the variety is. Um, in its over 11 different trials, it's 79% of average. So is it worth saving 50 cents a pound to have something that's going to underperform for you? Um, so any of the forage species that you're thinking about planting, maybe it's white clover, maybe it's red clover, you're going to frost seed this spring, uh, maybe it's fescue orchard grass, there's similar tables like this in the summary report. Now, let me just mention a couple of things with tall fescue. So let's say you're, gonna, you're deciding to plant tall fescue. We typically recommend that in the late summer, early fall, like early September. Um, but um, some people I know have asked me already about doing a spring seeding, and that will often work in early March, as long as we don't get hot weather too quick. And there's a number of new varieties that are out there. This is just a few examples, but these are all varieties that are called novel endophyte. Uh, meaning that they have an endophyte like Kentucky 31 in the plant, but it doesn't produce the toxins like you have with Kentucky 31. So a whole new group of tall fescues. That workshop March 8th will go into this a lot more detail. But you're trying to say, well, which of these should I, should I buy? So if you go to the individual tall fescue in brome grass report, um, and, and that's out on the table. In fact, Gene has every one of the different variety tests out on the table. We just released those just a few weeks ago. And you flipped to here, table six is showing some data from a test that was planted back in the fall of 15. Um, and so you can get more than just percentages. You can look at what is the seedling vigor. How vigorous did those seedlings start to grow? Um, you can look at the maturity. You may say that you want something that's going to mature a little bit later. So when this test was harvested May 2nd, 2016, then the bigger numbers mean that the plants were more mature. They had already gone to seed head. Whereas the smaller numbers mean they hadn't matured as much. So they've got longer to mature. You've got a longer window to harvest. Um, you may decide, well, I want something that I, I don't care so much about the yield. I want to make sure it stays in the stand really good. On all the reports, we've got the percent stand over time. Uh, now, in the case of the tall fescue, all of these that you're seeing here have held up quite well. Um, we have similar trials that we planted um, in plots like you saw from the aerial photo that, we, that we're grazing. So we've also got information on most of our forage species and how well they hold up under grazing. Then you can go and look at what's the yield on these. Um, the yield in 2016, yield in 2017, the two-year total, um, and we'll have a three-year total the end of next year on the same test. So if you want to say, well, how many tons per acre am I going to get? Now, again, 
All of that data may be confusing. You may decide that you're just going to go to that individual long-term summary report. Um, you're going to look at that and say, well, if I'm looking at those percentages, um, here's Kentucky 31. Um, it's 104% of average. Um, the Lacefield Max-Q, a new variety, it's 104% of average in eight different trials, and, and so on down here. That, that's a great way to pick a variety, but if you want more information, go to the individual report. And you, you noticed, even if you look closely back at that uh, previous slide, some varieties don't do as well one year as another year. So don't look at just one year's information and say, I'm going to choose that one or not choose it. It's much better to say, how have things done over the long term? Those that have been in a number of trials. So I'm going to end my part there. So my goal for you is just to know how to use this information, how to choose the right varieties. You'll hear a lot more detail about forage management and how that fits in your whole system. Um, grab those reports if you'd like to. Feel free to ask me any specific questions at the end. So Jimmy?